Celtic is on to Birds of Prey Wolves, issue one. Next one shot in this uh, series of one shots. Chuck Dixon writing with uh, Dick Giordano on the art. And this, you know, follows on quite rightly because you know, we left them in a place of sort of, you know, kind of like tensions were rising between Dinah and Babs and they were kind of ready to have some big talk and you know, this issue starts and they've not really had the talk yet. They're, they're kind of finishing up some other little mission and Dinah complains that it's not really what they were kind of supposed to be doing because they're at like a car factory and they're... Yeah, it's like Toyota or something, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. And it's not really, you know, that important. They're just kind of finishing off a job. And then it's like, no, we need some time apart. And it's like, and Dana, unlike, unlike before, she's just taking the, the comms off without, and, and like a rage says, okay, I'm going to take off the comms and we can go, we can do our own thing for a bit, right? Uh, so we get this issue, which is actually the two of them being separated for most of the issue. And Babs has a plot and Dana has a plot. Uh, and it's basically how, how uh, men are, are shit <laughs> in both plots in right of ways. Uh, and I'm not, I'm not, I start complaining for the record. Uh, I'm okay with men being portrayed as shitbags because a, a lot of them are. Uh, so, um, yeah, so it shows that they're both kind of like just kind of sad about the, the separation, if you want to call it that. But so it's, these are both essentially rebound guys. Yeah. Dana goes to a, a video rental store, uh, just to date the comic a little bit. Uh, and there's a lot of name dropping on here where the, the guy offers oh, we've got the new Seagal and she, she's like oh please um I, I get a you know chuckle out of that myself um sure but yeah so you know that, that leads to her ex-husband showing up or her first husband <laughs> um who I have to admit I'd read this issue before a long time ago but I'd forgotten she had a first husband like bef- you know before like she was with all yeah, like that uh, I'd forgotten entirely, and I hadn't read this part. It was something that I, I think I knew at some point. Like, yeah. Once I was reading it, I was like, oh, yeah, that, that's ringing a bell. Probably but... not in continuity now, because of the de-aging and all that from Flashpoint. And... I mean, I'm not even sure her mother's in continuity right now. Yeah, probably. Uh, whereas Babs goes to a bookstore and gets really pissed off at the clerk for trying to help her, because she feels that she's, you know... Like being overly helpful because she's in a wheelchair and it's, it's a sort of, I've actually seen that behaviour I mean, my father was in a wheelchair and I, I saw examples of this where they get frustrated if you offer them too much help they, they, they're yeah. like oh you're treating me like I'm helpless or you know they, they have that mentality and it just makes sense you understand why they, they kind of go down that path there's there's part of this that really confuses me because mm-hmm. she says oh yeah women's studies on the second floor can I help you to the elevator and I get why she's really annoyed about that oh you know I don't need the help to the elevator and she says, I don't want women's studies. I'm like, well, then why was she directing you to women's studies? That's so... Do I actually agree to an extent with this, is that I actually assumed she said that because that's what she asked about, because it happened off panel. And then she said, I don't even want women's studies. I'm like, oh, that was an assumption as well? That's that's a weird assumption to me. Yeah, like, like you know, helping people in, in, in the wheelchair is... Uh, you, you know, the, people, the, the, it's, it's well-meaning. You know, it, it's not malicious, but it happens, right? And I get why she's lashing out. Uh, especially in the mood that she's in, the women's study like that's such a reach. Like, what, what, like the only thing I think of is is she in here before and she's seen her looking at women's studies? Did she overhear a mention it's, of women's studies? Like, wh- why would you jump to that? It's, I, I think because it's, it's going for the thing where someone is. It's just like a woman walks into say like a hardware and like. DIY place, and the person at the door immediately says, oh, the kitchen section's over there. That, that's kind of what the moment they're going for here, right? Where she's making this assumption. But I feel like there's actually more kind of traditional, like, you know, women-centric focused genres. Like, like the, the romance section, for example, I would say would be the more obvious thing to do this joke with. It'd be yeah. like, you know, oh, you, uh, you want the, uh, the soppy romance section? No, I don't want and the soppy honestly, romance section. <laughs> that would have actually played so much better not just because it would have not been confusing, but that would have played off Dinah's beat fantastically. Sure. Where the guy's like, hey, we got all these action movies. And she's like, how about so, you know, the, she, she really crest, I can't remember who she uses, but, you know, it's like, oh, so you want something with a romance? Yeah. And it's this subversion for Dinah. And so this here, by doing the complete opposite, by going, hey, do you want the romance section? Uh, would have really worked. But women's studies, that, that's so specific. <laughs> It's just that I don't get it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. It's just, it's such a small thing. It's not a big deal. It's just 
a weird little yeah. line uh, in the moment. It just, it just threw me so much, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, we see that, that Craig, uh, the, the ex-husband, wants help from Dinah because he's in trouble. And did, did you actually remember his name, or did you happen to just read it when you skimmed then? Oh, no, I, I checked it. The first page showed up. Oh, okay. Uh, Get you. Yeah. Because I was going to say, there's no way I could have remembered his name was Craig. I, I, was, I, was, I was being sly. I was being sly. Uh, so, basically, m- much like uh, the first issue of Stephanie Brown Batgirl, uh, some punks try to mug Barbara, and all I could think of was, man, Gotham's a shithole. Like, who, who decides to mug someone in a wheelchair? Like, there's usually a, like a, a slight honour code, at least. <laughs> like... Easy, easy targets, aren't they, usually? Uh, well, usually. Babs is a bit more... Uh, she, she's the exception to the rule. Uh... And of course, she does kind of feel a little bit where she gets knocked out into the road and almost gets hit by a car. And uh, you know, this this guy comes out, and that leads to kind of the rest of the plot. Um, there, I mean, the, the ultimate reveal of this is a bit convoluted <laughs> for my liking. That these goons had a plan the whole time, where this guy's one of them, and he wanted to gain her trust so she would take him back to her place, and then they could rob her entire apartment. Like, it's such a convoluted plan. Now, I I love the the sheer arrogance and the egotistical nature of this man that is like whoever we pick i'm good i can get back to their apartment on the first date no problem <laughs> if that's the plan on a regular basis yeah yeah i, I it's really cool like, don't get me wrong i was glad i turned out to be a villain because he was been a slimy prick the entire time i'm like he better be a villain because he's awful yeah. <laughs> i hate him he better be a villain uh uh, whereas the Dinah plot is more that her husband is saying that he's on the run because he was doing, you know, taxes or, you know, the money books for this uh, company. It turned out to be part of the an organized crime and they're after him. But then, you know, the, the twist there is it, is it turns out that he actually stole like a, an encryption key from them so he could take the money for himself. So he's not an innocent victim like he claims he is. So Dinah's kind of falling for him a little bit over the issue. But then when she finds this out, it's like, nah, you're on your own <laughs> and just kind of leaves him. Uh, yeah eventually so and babs has been taken out for dinner and then the ultimate thing where she's and you know ba- babs's final scene is quite fun because she turns off the light and puts on her night vision goggles and, and it sets up during the issue that her wheelchair developed a squeak because of when it got uh, knocked over yeah. i actually really appreciate one of the, the villains you know shines the the the, the torch at her when she's in the night vision goggles to try you know this mm. you know realizes what's going on and tries to counteract it no but it sets up that her wheelchair developed a squeak and she uses that as a tactic at the end because she sort of rolls out the wheelchair he hears a squeak and he turns around and attacks it but then no she's obviously she's just moved to a new wheelchair because she's got more than one uh really simple stuff that, but it, it kind of showed them both having to kind of deal with their problems in different ways um, and then ultimately at the end, and like I say, the art and the issue is probably at its best during that night vision sequence. Uh, really fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so at the end of the issue, it's kind of them. Uh, Dinah like calls her and says, "Hey, are you there, Babs?" And she's like, "Yeah, I'm here." And they're both kind of like eating like comfort food. They're both eating ice cream, and they realize they're kind of similar. And Babs admits to, "Hey, maybe I need to let you sort of use your instincts sometimes. I I can't always you know order and dictate you know to a T. You have to." You know, make your own call in the field, and they kind of respect each other, and it ends with a, uh, you know, them just kind of looking at their ice cream, and uh, mm. yeah, it's about. I, I think what I like about this this little run so far of uh, Birds of Prey is that even though they've all been kind of separate things, there has been this through line of their kind they of attitude with each other. Yeah. each other. Yeah, there is a there is a plan in mind. This wasn't just random. Yeah, uh, so we got one more one shot I think left in the in the first big yeah. trade. I will say I'm ready for the one shots to be over and done with. You just gotta have normal issues, yeah. Well, we're almost normal there. Issues. We have it's, one because uh, my complaint with at least this one and the last one as well, I think, is just too long um, mm. for for what the story is. I f- I feel it being stretched out, even in this one where it's two completely separate full plots, but essentially, but between the pair of them. And I'm just like, this doesn't need to be this long. You could do this in in half the page count and still be as effective. Yeah. So. Yeah, we got one more one shot, and then we're actually onto the the book proper. We're on Birds of Prey issue one. Uh, so not normal bo- issues from that point on, uh, barring an annual here or there, or whatever. But yeah, uh, you know, so that's cool. Uh, you know, I, I enjoyed this well enough. Um, I probably agree. It's again, it's, it's a little bit too long for what it is, but not in a way that it was painful by any means. I, I don't think like you know, like I think. It, their demeanor, the way they were, the, the, their interactions were were amusing enough for the most part. 
uh, watching them kind of get their own at the end of the issue and then sort of come back together on the phone call. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think all that stuff worked uh, well enough. I mean, would it have worked better with like 10 less pages? I mean, probably, but... Uh, it, it wasn't like I was sitting there going, oh my god, this is torture as I was reading that. You know, it's everything's pleasant enough to get through. Yeah, it's not the worst thing ever. Like I say, I think it's just it's just over long for what it should be, what it needs to be. Yeah. Uh, and the art's okay as well. Uh, it doesn't stand out in particular. Uh, there's some fun pages and moments and some of the fights are good. Uh, yeah. S- sometimes... There's the odd panel here or there that looks a bit off. But yeah. uh, not, not, not terribly so. Yeah. Uh, what are you giving it? Uh, I'm going to give it a 6.5. Yeah, I'm going to give it a 7. That was kind of the number I had in my head the whole time.